Hello, folks. Let me tell you, the weather here has been absolutely dreadful. We even had an ice storm where we lost the power for over 24 hours. It, it's bad, and I haven't finished a deep sky object now in nearly a month. This is the biggest drought I've had since I've been in this hobby. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I thought I'd show you that the clouds do break during the day sometimes, so I thought I'd show you my setup when I'm trying to image the sun. And what we're looking at right here is a live view of the sun um, using the SharpCap software. I'm running at about half the resolution of my camera because I'm trying to get close to that filament on the sun. Oh, but look at that. So you can see, seeing right now is not good. You, when the sun really jiggles like that, it, it's seeing's bad. And uh, another thing I notice is if I'm too close to my garage or house, the sun jiggles a lot too because of the heat bouncing off of the roofs. And I have a small backyard, so I try to get away from them, but I, I, I don't know. I, I think I'm going to be always be at some kind of disadvantage from, my, from the great um, thing, things I see other people create with their quirk. But uh, like I said, I am using the quirk and the new ASI 183 camera, so... Um, this is about as good a focus as I can get today. And let me show you how I control the mount. I'm using actually Sequence Generator Pro, the control panel on the telescope tab. It has up and down arrows, which is pretty cool. I've tried other software, but other software that I've noticed seems to crash a bit much for my taste. Uh, Sequence Generator Pro has never crashed on me for doing this. So I, I like using it. I just have to get the hang of these arrows yet. I still don't have the <laughs> good feel for it. Okay, let's try and go that way. So you can see that filament. That's what I want to capture right now. Let's see. Let's go down a little bit, try and center that filament. Okay, now go here. All right. And how I control the focus, this is the Moonlight software that comes with the Moonlight Electronic Focuser. Or actually, I don't know if it comes with it. I I probably download it from their website. And once I get close to the, the focus that I like, then I, 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 I go up 100. And, okay, that, that, that took me out of focus, down 100. Now if I go down another 100, okay, that's I'm out. So I know I found that, that sort of that midpoint of where my focus should be. And then you can go up 10 or down 10. So I'm never sure exactly if I found the best focus, but I know I'm in there somewhere. And with my seeing, this might be the best I can do. And so what I'm going to do to capture the sun right now is I'm going to hit Start Capture. I like to go with 500 frames, or you can set a time limit. But try to keep it under, uh, I, I've heard, try and keep it under 15 seconds or so. Uh, that would be the max, 15 seconds. Because the sun moves around a lot, and the, the texture, it, it moves. So if you go too long, you, you know, it, I don't know how that's going to look. So just... You can't, you know, you can. I can probably go quite, quite a long time for the moon and longer for planets. But with the sun, keep it, keep it short. Let me hit start. I'll capture this and see how it comes out. But let me show you some of the images I've captured since the last time I made a video because I, I think I have improved a bit. I even tried an animation so far. So uh, let, let's see what I got here. So yeah, I want to show you the progress I'm making so far. I got a long way to go, but. I'm getting there. So what we're looking at here is the very first image I captured. And at this point, I was just happy I even found the sun. And I'm like, yay, I found it. But now, with the solar finder, I just moved the, the, the sun right to the crosshairs. And I know I found the sun. I don't even have to look at my computer screen now. It's, it's that easy. It takes two seconds. So yeah, solar finder's a must. <clears throat> and uh, this is my... Um, second attempt, and I'm still now. I'm, I'm figuring out how to do color by this time in Photoshop, and uh, that turned out to be easier than I thought. And um, I'll even show you how I did this right after I get through these images. I want to show you because it's, it's such a cool little trick because I'm using a mono camera, and I thought, well, how do you add color to it? And yeah, it's pretty simple. And this is where I inverted the sun to really make the texture pop out. I even picked up some prominence. I got lucky. I captured that in the, in the same video, prominence and the surface. So with the, the chromosphere quark. And 
This is my first attempt at an animation. I only have about uh, 17 frames, and it's only about a second worth of video going back and forth. But you can see the prominences going back and forth. I'll, I'll embed this in the video later so you can get a better view. But I, I like it as a first attempt. It sounds a little trickier to animate than that comet in Jupiter uh, that I did before. But it, it, was, it was fun to do, but I, I'm definitely going to want to do a better one later with bigger prominences. And here's one where I tried to overexpose the sun and uh, bring out the prominences more. Where and it worked. I didn't try to sharpen it. This is just a practice run to see if that, that you know works for me. And it, it does. So that that'll be interesting down the road. And this is one where I'm still working on um, improving the the texture of the sun. And the, this is the one I captured today, which I think so far is my best one yet. I like how the texture looks so far. So going forward, I'm not going to settle for anything less than this, but I got a long way to go still to get better. But so far, this is my gold standard. And uh, let me show you now how I actually color the sun with um, a mono image in Photoshop. Okay, so I'm in Photoshop. CS3, and this is a, the, a mono image um, before I've colored it. I want to show you how I add the color to this. And, you know, I, I still like these mono images. I, I think they have a level of realism um, more so than the color versions of the sun that I do. Sometimes I, I think it, after I add color to it, to me it still looks like too cartoonish. So I, I feel like I can. I still need to improve to get a more realistic view of, of what I'm doing with the sun. And but let me show you um, what, what uh, my friend Jason told me the values that he starts off with initially. And you go into image adjustments levels, and then you just click on red and give red a value of 1.6. Give green a value of uh, 0.6, that's what Jason uses. I like 0.8, it's a little less dramatic for my taste. And I give blue a value of 0.2, and there's the sun, there's the color, that nice orangey hot look. So I, I toned it down a bit for my taste, but you, you can certainly go in, in any direction you want. So I just wanted to show you that that's how easy it is if you've got a mono camera. That's how I would add color to it. So, okay. Thanks for watching, folks, and I will see you later.